Hey, I'm Lauren from Giorgio Draws and today I'm going to be painting a modern Scandinavian style watercolour wreath. Okay, so today I'm going to paint a simple Scandinavian style wreath. I want it to feel minimalist and modern. So I've chosen a shape that isn't circular for my wreath. I'm going to go with a triangle and I'm going to use just some sparse greenery and a little bit of ribbon and just keep it simple because I want it to look really elegant, really gorgeous. So I've already sketched out what I'm going to do roughly. Um, this is because it's just the way that I prefer to work. So you can get going however you need to. If you want to sketch something, if that's how you work, then do it. If you rather just get going with the paint, go for it. Um, personally, I just find this more helpful. I feel like it's composition is one of the things that I worry about. So if I get a sketch down before I come down to paint, then I have one less thing to think about. So I have a sketch. I've got it down here. So I just need to choose some colors. So today I'm gonna work with my Letter Sparrow palette and we have three greens already in here. The Nicosia green is my favorite kind of eucalyptus pale green color. I absolutely love it. So I'm definitely gonna be using this. Gorgeous. So that's my pale green. And then I want something darker and richer. So I'm taking some emerald. I'm just going to dull that vibrancy down a little bit with a tiny bit of black. And maybe a tiny bit of brown. So we've already got that really nice contrast between the two greens. And I might kind of blend the green from between, but I'm not sure yet. And then I'm gonna need a color for my ribbon, which I think I will decide. Shall I decide later? Or should I decide now? I'm gonna decide now. So we've got blue in this palette, so it might as well be blue. And I want this to feel really soft and delicate. So I'm looking for quite a pale kind of earthy blue. I'm starting off with sky from this palette. And again, I just want to tone it down with a tiny bit of black. And it really is a tiny bit. Okay, I'm really happy with that. Let's get going. So I'm using small brushes today because um, I've done this sketch. I want it to be fairly detailed, which is why I've used the sketch in the first place so that I can just concentrate and get, get close. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to use two small brushes. One is a double zero, so it's super fine for detail. The other one is a two, so it's great for slightly bigger washes. And these brushes are both by a company called Coom Germany and they're memory point brushes. So first off, I'm going to paint my paler leaves. And I'm just picking up some of this Nicosia mix.
and I'm just varying the value slightly. So I picked up a bit more water this time so that we've got a weaker leaf there, just so it doesn't look too blocky. darker colour and just letting it bleed through a little bit. Just a tiny bit. As you can see I'm working really small today and that's just personal preference. I enjoy working small. Um, it means that I can pack loads and loads of detail in in quite a short space of time but uh, it doesn't mean that what I'm doing is any more kind of difficult. Um, it's just a different scale. So it's, it's a nice one to play with sometimes. If you're used to working smaller, try something big and you'll probably get more expressive. Or if you're used to big, go small and like you'll feel little details starting to come out. And yeah, it's a nice exercise. Okay. So I'm gonna pop the base layer of my ribbon on now. There we go, so my ribbon is on. Just spotted a leaf that I didn't paint a minute ago. I'll just fill that one in. So I'm gonna move into my smaller greenery now. So I'm swapping to the super fine brush and we're gonna go a little bit darker. So I'm picking up this emerald black combo that I made next. The great thing with um, sketching beforehand is it really does feel like painting by numbers. It's so satisfying because all of the composition is planned, it's all done, and I just get to sit and colour in. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's my favourite method. I always sketch before I paint, or nearly always.
So I'm just starting to make sure that the greenery I'm painting is overlapping a little bit and it's not too separated. So because I did my paler green a few minutes ago, it's just dry enough now that I can start to dip into that a little bit if I want to and kind of layer things more. Okay, so looking at this, I've decided that I do want a third green. Just to be awkward. So, what shall we do? We've got a nice pistachio already set in this palette, so I'm gonna grab a bit of that and see how that looks. This is pretty, it's a little bit vibrant, so I'm just gonna weaken it with some water and of course a tiny bit of black which just deepens the tone just takes the edge off So I'm, I'm following the sketch that I did earlier, but I'm also keeping an eye on how things are looking. So if I get a certain way through and start to think that it's not balanced right, or it's too dark in places, um, then I'll start to lean away from what I'd sketched and just use my initiative really and, and just keep an eye on everything, make sure that what I sketched is looking good in paint form and if it's not what can I do to change that I'm just thickening this greenery out a little bit because I don't know, it looked a little bit too sparse. Okay, so that is the first coat of all my greenery and my ribbon. I've got pretty much most of what I want to get down on there because I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time going into a lot of detail on this because it's very small and if I keep adding and adding and adding detail to something so tiny, it might start to look overworked. Um, so I'm just going to go in with one more layer and just add a few tiny details 
to help it pop. So first off, back to my eucalyptus. I'm taking the pure colour this time, so I'm not going to weaken it and I'm not going to add anything. And I just want to give these leaves a bit of definition. So same again with my blue, this is for the ribbon, I don't think the ribbon needs a huge amount of attention to be honest but we'll just add a few areas so that it's not too flat. And then our darker green doesn't really need much, I don't think. Might just pop in the odd leaf. Okay, um, just do a few stronger leaves in this spray as well, just to give a bit of definition, a bit of contrast. Okay, so next up we have our reef and I have something super exciting planned. I'm gonna go metallic. So this, for anyone who doesn't know, is called Fine Tech. It's by a company called Kaliro Colors and um, this is just magic, magic stuff. Um, you just activate it with a bit of water and it starts to come alive. This. And it's really, really pigmented, super high quality metallic paint. So that is what I'm gonna paint my triangle with. So I've added some water. I tend to try and get this to kind of like a double cream consistency so that it's nice and rich and thick. And get some on the brush. 
I'm sticking with my tiny brush because I want quite a thin wreath. So starting at the top and just lightly brushing the colour. What I love about this stuff as well is it's really opaque so you can use it as the last thing that you apply and it will just cover any paint that you want it to but that is something to bear in mind when you're applying it. And then the very final touch is I just want to add a little ribbon that's holding my wreath up. So I'm just mixing some brown and black to make a really neutral colour. And we're done. So there we have it, our modern Scandinavian botanical wreath. It's super elegant and refined, and it's a bit of a fresh take on traditional wreaths. So have a go, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, please subscribe and hit the bell. We're gonna be having new videos every week heading your way. Happy painting.